Hello, I'm John Mamias, executive producer at CD Projekt Red in Warsaw. And today, this is our first Dev Diary uh, for The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings on Xbox 360. We'll be talking a lot about the new features that are going into the game. And I'll explain a little bit about the fact that the 360 is actually an adaptation from the PC title and not a simple port. What we mean by adaptation is to effectively rebuild the game so that it feels native to the console. We've rewritten the renderer and created a new rendering pipeline so that we can achieve much better performance with the same fidelity as in the PC version. We're also implementing a new intelligent camera system, new controls, a new targeting system, and a more console-friendly user interface. We're also adding significant new content and other features. We took special effort to beef up the game for, uh, you know, for the Xbox release. We're in this uh, great situation where we already had the, the game out there and people experienced it. And we have a lot of uh, community feedback and we want to put all this into, into this game and make it better. Um, especially it's it's very complex story. We want we want everyone to understand it. That's why we beefed up the, the especially the final chapter of the game. We've put in some additional events, additional sub quests, so that the story develops in a way we've imagined it like the first time. In our game, you take a role of the Witcher, and the Witcher is like a professional monster slayer. He's a, like a hired mercenary, but trained specially to finding monsters. He's like the ultimate warrior in this world. Uh, he was taken as an infant, you know, by other witchers, and he undergone uh, a lot of uh, mutations and, uh, you know, very uh, hard training, so that right now he's like the ultimate killing machine. You're not just some any witcher, you're Geralt of Rivia, and Geralt of Rivia is a character with its own story, with its own background. Uh, he's a guy that was, is famous in the Northern Kingdoms, but for some reason he died, and everyone thought he was dead, but now he's back among the living. But the circumstances of his return are like, you know, clouded with mystery because he, he has amnesia and he forgot, you know, how he came back. When Geralt uh, faces the assassin who takes the life of one of the most important kings of, uh, of the north, uh, is the moment where, like, uh, your, your past uh, gets to you and it's like, it's the beginning of your journey. In addition to an epic story, the game um, features complex combat system that combines intense, dynamic action with tactical choices. You can combine different character abilities and character customization with real-time moves such as parry, dodge, uh, repost. You can also choose from a variety of um, tactical options. Uh, you can use alchemy, uh, traps and bait, you can throw bombs at your opponents, you can use different ranged weapons, you can use magical signs or magic. Uh, you can also sneak and uh, deal non-lethal blows, non-lethal attacks to your foes. Since we started to work on uh, adaptation of The Witcher 2 on consoles, we already knew that we had to put a lot of work to make user interface fit more uh, to the gameplay style of the consoles. That's why we gathered a lot of information from our fans uh, from the PC version of the game and we included this knowledge to our work. We are also uh, including a lot of new improvements, like to, to give an example, a special, totally new uh, targeting system which allows you to select easily a proper enemy. We want to improve uh, controls uh, in our game in terms of combat and outside of it because it's really important matter for us to have a game fluid and smooth in those areas. That's why we decided to rewrite whole controls code from scratch. And the same is with camera system. The Witcher 2 runs on our own technology called Red Engine. We decided to develop it because we wanted to achieve unlimited uh, creative and artistic freedom. We wanted to give our designers and uh, artists tools to create the world of Witcher just the way uh, they seen it. The combination of a unique art direction and a powerful engine such as the Red Engine really helps in creating a modified environment that both looks and feels unique. The Witcher 2 will be one of the best looking titles to come out to Xbox 360. It's important to note that everything we're doing for the Xbox version will also be delivering for the PC version. And there's some important new additions and enhancements that we haven't talked about today that we'll be announcing later in the year.
Chcieliśmy zrobić Wiedźmina 2 jako grę, która hołduje takim staroszkolnym tradycjom RPGowym. To znaczy grę, w której można wybierać bardzo dużo rzeczy, w której można mieć prawdziwy wpływ na przebieg wydarzeń w fabule. Bo prawdziwa nieliniowość dla nas to jest właśnie nie, te, nie tylko te drobne wybory, które dotyczą nie wiem, naszych towarzyszy czy sojuszników, ale te, które sprawiają, że czasami nawet główna linia fabularna dotyczy zupełnie innych wątków lub dzieje się w zupełnie innym miejscu. Na Xboxie nie było jeszcze gry tak nieliniowej i złożonej pod względem fabularnym jak Wiedźmin 2. Konstruując fabułę i zastanawiając się, rozważając różne wybory, przed jakimi stanie gracz, bardzo zależało nam na tym, aby nie były to wybory dokonywane na chłodno, na zimno i wykalkulowane. Zanim dochodzi do tych wyborów, staramy się budować fabułę w ten sposób, aby na drodze gracza stawali różni ludzie, z którymi może on się zaprzyjaźnić, których może znienawidzieć, co później doprowadza do wyborów emocjonalnych, ponieważ jesteśmy w stanie wtedy, będąc czyimś przyjacielem, przeżywać daną fabułę i zdecydowanie idziemy tam, gdzie idzie nasz przyjaciel i analogicznie odwrotnie, jeżeli naprawdę ktoś nas mocno w... wtedy zdecydowanie w trakcie wyboru jesteśmy na nie. Oczywiście w przypadku świata gry musimy się liczyć z pewnymi uproszczeniami. To jest troszeczkę ubarwione konwencją fantazy, to jest troszeczkę, że tak powiem, ulepszone ze względu na fabułę, ale chcemy, żeby ten świat był dla gracza realistyczny. A ponieważ w prawdziwym świecie też na każdym kroku spotykamy się z konsekwencjami naszych wyborów, to w świecie Wiedźmina także chcieliśmy, żeby to, co zrobi gracz, za chwilę mogło do niego wrócić, tak samo jak i w prawdziwym świecie. Nad Wiedźminem 2 pracowali ludzie, którzy sami grają w gry, którzy właściwie kochają gry. Są to zarówno gracze konsolowi, jak i pz -owi. Ja sam osobiście jestem zapalonym graczem. Preferuję akurat gry konsolowe i dlatego też czułem się mocno poszkodowany, że właściwie nie było, nie było dostępnej gry, która dawałaby mi aż takie poczucie wolności, której wybory byłyby aż tak, o tak drobnych, aż po wybory mające wpływ na całą rozgrywkę, na relacje z postaciami, na, na, na kształt świata, na społeczności w grze. To tego właściwie na konsolach nigdy nie było. Mamy około czterech rozpoczęć gry, około 16 globalnych stanów świata po zakończeniu gry. To jest ogromna ilość, która jest raczej niespotykana w grach komputerowych. Bardzo ważnym elementem Wiedźmina 2 jest to, że nie mamy żadnego systemu karmy. Mianowicie gra w żaden sposób nie rozpoznaje, czy zachowujemy się dobrze, czy źle i na tej podstawie, nie daj Boże, nagradza nas jakimiś gameplayowymi wczorami. Ważne jest to, że tutaj każdy wybór funkcjonuje również sam w sobie. Mianowicie e, nie myślimy o tym, żeby kreować bohatera jako złego, dobrego czy neutralnego. Jest to po prostu człowiek, który reaguje na, to, na sytuację, w której, w której stawia go świat. Questy w Wiedźminie 2 są e, pełne większych i mniejszych nieliniowości. E, to wymagało od nas specyficznego podejścia do samego tworzenia takiego scenariusza. Czy nie, nie mogła być to po prostu opisana historia, dlatego że wtedy bardzo ciężko jest sobie zmysłowić, jak wiele jest tych różnych połączeń w samym questie i między questami. To wymagało od nas tworzenia skomplikowanych schematów e, bloczkowych, które pokazują tak jakby wszelkie możliwe połączenia między wydarzeniami i postaciami. I również połączenia pomiędzy innymi questami w wielu sytuacjach. Bo tylko wtedy mogliśmy tak jakby przed samym podejściem do pracy wiedzieć, jak bardzo skomplikowana to będzie struktura i jak wiele pracy to będzie kosztować. Jeżeli chodzi o wybory w grze, to są one na kilku płaszczyznach. Tak zwane wybory globalne, które decydują o przejściu gry w taki, a nie inny sposób. Mniejsze wybory dotyczące wyborów w poszczególnych questach i wybory już zupełnie małe dotyczące wyborów w poszczególnych scenach, gdzie gracz ma możliwość podejścia do rozmówcy na różne sposoby. Patrząc na, na te wybory globalne, Takim największym wyborem jest też wybór właśnie pomiędzy Roszem a Jorpetem w akcie pierwszym, bo ten wybór decyduje o tym, do jakiej lokacji pojedziemy. I to jest tak, że lokacje w Wiedźminie 2 są robione unikalnie pod, pod, dane, pod, pod te wybory. Jeśli wybierzemy Jorweta, jedziemy do Wergen, to jest krasnoludzkie miasto w akcie drugim, Wybierając Rosza nie trafimy tam, więc nie poznamy wszystkich wątków, nie poznamy wszystkich bohaterów, którzy tam się pojawiają. Możemy dopiero co zobaczyć grając drugi raz w grę, więc tak naprawdę 
cały, cały ogrom pracy włożony w tą nieliniowość zrobiony jest po to, żeby gracz mógł w tą grę grać wiele razy i żeby zawsze odkrył tam coś dla siebie. Hello, I'm John Moyes, executive producer at CD Project Red, and welcome back to our continued development diary series on The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings, and now the Enhanced Edition. Today we're going to delve into some of the new features we've created for the Enhanced Edition. To allay some of the story complexity, we've created some new cinematic sequences and spread them throughout the game. Our partner, Platige Image, will first talk about the new intro that we've created, and after that, our cinematics and our producer will talk about more of the cinematic sequences in the game. Just after finishing The Witcher 1, uh, CD Projekt came to us with the idea of the intro for The Witcher 2, and it was quite a long time ago, it was like three years ago, and Witcher 2 wasn't even there, it, it was just an idea. The intro fills in an important piece of the backstory. Those who've played The Witcher 2 uh, might remember that uh, King Demavend's death at the hand of an assassin is uh, something of a known fact at or near the beginning of the game. The intro shows exactly how that happened, and it shows it in spectacular fashion. From the very, very early stages, we knew what will happen in the intro. Uh, we also quite early knew where it will happen, because the, the idea of the action happening on the boat uh, was very fr very early in the process and it came directly from uh, CD Projekt. One of the very early ideas was that who is the assassin is using a hornet nest to start a chaos on the boat and he's using this chaos to, to kill the king and escape from the boat. But I wasn't sure that it would uh, really work as a cinematic ex experience and uh, after some discussions with Adam Badowski and some other people in CD Projekt we came with the idea of the ice bomb. At the beginning we see the ship, the party, the jesters fooling around, uh, then there's a freezing of the ship and the havoc that the assassin creates uh, among the crew members. We wanted this final moment, crowning the whole action, uh, to be really brutal, raw and ugly. I've realized that it will be so much more interesting and there will be so much more tension if we actually make the assassination during the collapsing of the ship. And this idea was, was very late in the process. Uh, it, it was after all the stages of ac ac acceptation and uh, it already changed everything, but we loved it so much in, the, in Platige and the people in CD Projekt also loved the idea that we decided like a week before the start of the production to change this detail, which actually changed everything. You see individual steps, muscle movements, slashes, and, and twinkles in the eye that express ferocity or fear. And they're all important. They all bring in a mountain of meaning. They, they suck you in and, and draw you to the edge of your seat and bam. Three and a half minutes and you know you're gonna have one badass motherfucker to contend with. Besides the CG intro, we prepared a lot of new other video sequences. One of them are the loading movies. Uh, they were constructed to summarize what happened in the previous act and create a smooth transition to the next one. Grabbing Geralt, I embarked on a voyage upriver, deeper into the Pontar Valley. We also added 11 new cutscenes, all placed in the various places of the game. 
I can tell that three of them are showing what's going on in Lockwin when Geralt is busy with a dragon. And the rest of them are connected with the new content of the game. Another uh, type of video sequences that we prepared for the enhanced edition are the final boards. Uh, these are the short movies uh, that uh, are combined at the end of the game into one big movie that summarizes what happened in the game. Depending on the player choices, you can end up with 12 versions of those movies. Especially for this part of the game, we composed new music and recorded it with a live choir. The Witcher had traveled far and wide in search of the Kingslayers. Along the way, he had met both the Righteous and Scoundrels, Bernard Laredo amongst the latter. Additionally, we've prepared a completely new outro for the game. It was fully rendered on our own technology, Red Engine. And right from the start, we decided it was going to take place in a whole new location, so yeah, we created a whole new location for it, which includes like uh, new trees, new bushes, everything, just to have it geologically different. Uh, we also wanted to create this perfect view, and uh, I think we achieved it is with this bridge that goes across a river, there's a forest on each uh, side of the river, there's a mountain far off in the distance, it looks absolutely stunning and I hope you guys will like it. So we've only just scratched the surface of the new content we're adding to Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings Enhanced Edition. Stay tuned for the next Dev Dio where we talk about the new gameplay mechanics as well as the new quests and the new characters. Welcome back to our continuing development diary series on The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings Enhanced Edition. Today our artists will be talking about some of the new content for the new title. We really value our fans' opinions and, and they were the reason we decided to expand Chapter 3 a bit, which now features two brand new complete quests. One of the new quests is Lilis and Vipers. A quest explaining what happened with Anais and Bussy, Fortes' children, before the Act 3. Geralt will have to solve the mystery behind their disappearance. In Lilies and Vipers, we meet Brigitte Papabrock, a lady-in-waiting in Foltest's court, who was recruited by Vernon Roach to do some uh, uh, investigative work. We knew that she was supposed to look like a rich, liberated nobleswoman who doesn't hesitate to use her assets to conquer hearts of influential people on the royal court. Her mission was to seduce the two most powerful Temerian nobles, while keeping an eye on Foltest's bastard children, who, as, as Roach rightly assumed, became the target of all kinds of schemes after the king's death. What happened to the convoy carrying Anais and Busi? What about the children? Baron Kimbolt was supposed to look like an old war veteran, but despite his 65 years, uh, we wanted him to make an impression of a strong and fit man, dominant over the surrounding people. He puts great faith in the old world, uh, namely the North, and at the same time he positively despises Nilfgaard. And it's, it's this hatred that prompts him to take shortcuts where his values are concerned. Baron Raven and Kimbolt, I presume. Does that witch's code of yours exempt you from court etiquette? Does it grant you the right to speak to the Highborn without being asked to do so? Count Maravel is Kimbolt's opposite in many respects. He's around 40 years old, was always on the chubby side of things, so he never had any chivalrous or, or knightly pretensions. He spent a lot of time in the library, stuck to his books, and that led him to conclude that the North was very backward. Would you say you resemble your countrymen? I thank the gods I do not. It is because I love my homeland that I am the first to note its faults, and they are many. Care to elaborate? Hypocrisy, superstition, lack of learning. Need I go on? A second quest is also placed in Loch Muin, an ancient city full of mysterious ruins and dungeons. That was a great opportunity to create a quest that would remind adventurers of famous character Indiana Jones. The secrets of Loch Muin, on the other hand, delves more into the realms of magic and alchemy. The Witcher is reunited with uh, Cynthia, a sorceress with whom he has uh, quite a beef. If he can overcome that, she leads him straight to the laboratory of the mysterious Derhenna, a, a mage who allegedly discovered the secret of the downfall of the ancient Vran civilization. Witcher, help me complete my mission. Help me open Derhenna's laboratory. 
In the enhanced edition of the game, we will be delivering a couple of new locations. And you have to believe me that they will be something totally refreshing because creating new places, new locations after the core game has been already delivered, after we create our technology, is a brand new experience for all level artists. One of the locations lies underneath the ancient city of Lokmin uh, in the passageway in Surge that runs underneath the city. Uh, it was really great fun creating these old collapsed hallways and chambers, you know, with hidden statues uh, with light shaft coming down on them. It's, it's barely held together and really feel this heavy weight on top of it. Um, you know, it, it just feels like it's about to collapse and it's really great claustrophobic feeling. The second new location introduced in Witcher 2 Enhanced Edition is this lush forest next to Lak Muin. It's a really beautiful location, but on the other hand it's also very dangerous. If you played The Witcher 2 and you've already visited Act 3, at this moment you're probably wondering, okay, where is this forest? And that's actually something I can't tell you at this stage, but I'm sure you'll find out while you play through the game again. Besides adding new locations to enhanced edition of The Witcher 2, we're also upgrading some old ones, um, for instance Loch Main in Act 3. Um, depending on your choices, you can either see a very dark version of Loch Main or you can see a very, well, let's say a little more positive version of Loch Main. And uh, I don't want to spoil the surprise for anyone, but it's, it's really, really impressive.